Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will clearly understand the fundamentals, the installation procedure, the features and things which are around one API which you must know. This is going to be an interesting as well as a very informative session. So stay tuned. Well, what is one API and what is it all about? It's one API Intel's ecosystem. It is built on Intel's rich heritage of CPU and tools expanded to XP. It can be anything that is where the future is going to be. Well, if you understand closely, the challenges are plenty in the modern era. The growth in the specialized workloads have been ever increasing. Variety of data centric hardware is required. It's going to be more based on the data and data centric hardware requirement is growing very tremendously. Separate programming models and tool chains for each architecture is required today, which is a very challenging task for the developers. And the software development complexity limits freedom of the architectural choice. You cannot choose the architecture as per your wish because the software development complexity is growing and it's going to demand and command you over selecting the architecture. Well, what's there with one API for meeting all these challenges? A one API is all about cross architecture language, which is based on C++ and SQL standards. It is having powerful set of libraries designed for acceleration of domain specific functions and it is all extremely powerful and competent. A complete set of very good advanced compilers, libraries and porting analysis and debugger tools, all these are available and this is available for you right now. Well, you can see that in the picture which I have presented, uh, there are architectures here. The hardware specifics are given here, can be CPU, GPU, FPG or anything. One API will come in picture and it can play the role of mediator and interfacing and it can take you to the next levels. So, simply speaking, one API is cross architecture programming, which is going to deliver freedom to choose the best of the hardware. And it is also notable that is based on industry standards and open specifications. Importantly, it is compatible with existing high performance languages, which include C++, OpenMP, Fortran and MP. So what more is required? It's going to be very compatible with whatever we already know. So it's going to be easy for us to learn and to work on. The simple view is presented here where you can see that one API acts as the interface between the hardware and the middleware and frameworks. It's going to be easy to learn, fantastic to understand and powerful to use. The landing page is oneapa.io. You are requested to visit that page whenever you have time. It has got plethora of information. Well, the Intel One API has got excellent set of toolkits which are tailored to your needs. You can go ahead and start exploring all these and it's going to be fundamentally very useful for you. It starts with One API base toolkit, which is nothing but a core set of high performance tools which are used for building data parallel C++ applications and one API library based applications. We have got other tools, other toolkits which include one API HPC toolkit, which is going to help you in delivering fast C++, Fortran, OpenMP applications at that scale. The scale expectation is very high these days in terms of hardware. So we can deliver it at that level. The Intel One API IoT toolkit is emerging and it's very good to use. It is going to help you in building high performance, efficient, reliable solutions, which can even run at the network's edge. It's more on edge. And we have got Intel's One API DL framework a developer toolkit. It is all going to help you in building deep learning frameworks or you can customize the existing ones. You can modularize the existing ones so that your applications can run really faster. They want rendering toolkit also, which is going to help you in creating excellent high fidelity visualization applications, particularly AI, VR, all this kind of stuff can become much more easier when you go ahead with it. Intel AI analytics toolkit is also there, which is very powerful and we will see about it separately in a session. We've got Intel distribution of Open Vino toolkit. I have already taught a lot about Open Vino in my channel and this is going to be part of One API as well now. We have got one API toolkit, which is available with one API toolkits, which include open Vino, And this is going to be very, very interesting. It's going to help you in deploying high performance inference and applications from the edge to cloud. I'll show you some examples in the near future as well, as in what kind of applications can be built with open Vino toolkit. And finally, we have got systems toolkit, which is all about Intel system bring up toolkit. It helps you in debugging tuning systems for power and performance altogether. So these are all the bunch of toolkits that come with you with one API and you can explore all this. 
Well, how do we learn all this? It's going to be very easy for you to download the free ebook which is available here, which has got one API related content. I have given the link. Go ahead, register yourself, download the free book. Where do I run all this? You need powerful Play Store and all this because all these kits are extremely useful, handy, and at the same time, they need a place for them to be used. So, Dev Cloud. The Intel Dev Cloud is free, powerful, and easy to access. And I'm going to talk about how are you going to use it right now. Well, the Dev Cloud is going to offer you a lot of features which can help you learning, prototyping, and testing. Importantly, you can run all your workloads for free on a cluster of all latest Intel hardware and software which is a phenomenal feature and I'm sure you would love it. If you talk about the test performance on the CPU, GPU and FPGA architectures, everything is available inside it and you can choose the best one for your process. You can choose CPU which ranges in the vast range of CPU options are available for you. The GPU, we have got a vast range as well. FPGA support is also there. So what do you get eventually when you go ahead with Intel DevTool? You get free access to all the Intel One API toolkits. That's the reason we are including, I have included the dev cloud into one API session. You are going to get free access to all the one API toolkits and the components and most importantly, the latest Intel hardware with dev cloud access. You're going to get 220 GB of file storage, 192 GB RAM, 120 days of access and extensions are given as well to people who need it. And it has got terminal interface. Many of us are used to terminal interface and it's there. Microsoft Visual Studio code integration support is there. A remote desktop for Intel One API rendering toolkit is also supported. Well, how do I get that? It's going to be very simple. The first step is to click on the link that I have provided on the description box as well as in front of you. Once you click on that link, it will take you through a very simple portal where you need to fill a very limited amount of information which asks for your name, email id and the preferred username i am given an example there my name is Sri Ram. the second last name is vasudevan my email id is given username that i preferred is given and the password has to be chosen after that the country and region has to be selected so once it is done you can see that i have got a video for you as well which you can go through quickly so i need to select all these options properly and you can even use your email as the username that kind of options are also available if you do not want a username which is chosen by you, a short form or something like that, you can always go ahead with your email ID being your username. And you need to select the country and once it is done, the next step can be enabled easily. Password requirements are pretty stringent here. You have to use the password based on the requirements guidelines that they have given. So once you click the next step, they will ask you what purpose are you going to use it for. I have selected a training, business or institution name, I just gave test and what type of user am I? I'm an embedded IoT developer and communication subscriptions are also available. You can select the best one that you want. And the moment you click yes and then next, there will be terms and agreements. Please read it through if you have time. You can go through it and then accept. So all the terms and conditions are presented and about 11 points are discussed very clearly there. And I would recommend you to go through it if you really want. Right, accept it and submit it. That's all. You will get an email immediately after this, which says that your access permissions are granted. Make sure that you check it immediately because within five days it gets expired. So you need to really use it properly. Now, this is the email that you would have got. If you have registered, you would get this email immediately. Almost done. Please verify your email is the content. You can see that there is a link called as verify your email. The moment you click it, you will get your link verified. I am playing it right now for you as a video clip. You'll be able to understand that very clearly. Just click on that. That's all your work is done. And you can now sign in. Well, this is the process that I have explained to you. You would have got an email. Just sign in again. The moment you sign in, the world of usage, the world of opportunities, the world of toolkits that are available in front of you is really plenty. Well, you've got your dev cloud access. You now have to go ahead and understand the best part of it, you can connect with Jupyter Lab. You can use the Jupyter Notebook to learn how one API can solve the challenges of the programming and it's very, very easy. So I've given the link there at the top. I will also give this link in the description. Click that link and it's going to be very easy for you to launch. You have a launch option, a launch server option available there. And once you launch it, you will get the screen like what I have in front of you. You would have gotten the uh, Jupyter Notebook launched and there would be a welcome to Jupyter Notebook message. And I strongly recommend you guys to go through it because the plethora of information is available there on One API and Jupyter. 
Now, if you've seen, it gives you easy access and I'm going to walk you through the complete video as well for that which I have recorded for you. Now, I'm going to go to this link first. Now, if you see, once the link is open, you'll be able to get the option for you to go ahead with Jupyter Notebook. And all these are the options that are available. We are going to talk about it a little later. All the toolkits, everything will be spoken about. We've got multiple toolkits available and each of them will be really very useful. They, they go into very specific toolkit and they explain it very neatly as well with example. Now comes the main part of it. Click launch Jupyter Lab. It takes few seconds for the first time. Next time it launches really very really fast. So you are launching it right now and you have got the Jupyter Lab ready for you. It may take few seconds. That's all. You've got your Jupyter Lab in front of you. You've got notebook options with selecting which kind of uh, options you need to go ahead. Python 3.8, Python, PyTorch with AA kit, TensorFlow AA kit, console options are available and terminal, text file, markdown file, Python file. Uh, all these are available. And this is what I told you. This is the welcome message. Please go through it. This has got a lot of content which you will certainly love to learn. For a beginner, I strongly recommend uh, to learn this because only when you learn how to use this Jupyter, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, explore further opportunities with this toolkit. So please go ahead and explore this. This is a very interesting set of content which is available there. Step by step, they were explained and it is very easy for anybody to understand. So I recommend you strongly to go ahead with that. Well, so what next? We are going to explore the opportunities in terms of understanding the varieties of available toolkits with uh, one API. I'm going to do that in the next session. Until then, I take a break from you. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. And thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the next session. Thank you.